Representative Carroll. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I speak in opposition. May I have the words from our great um, representative from Mililani? Sure. And also, may I have the, um, an opportunity to say a few words? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, it is with a heavy heart that I oppose this bill. I want better for our people. I am a duly elected member of this House of Representatives. I represent the citizens of the island of East Maui, Lanai, and Molokai, and of course, Kaho'olawe and Molokini. And I am a native Hawaiian. If you look into the gallery, what do you see? A divided community. Last week, our Joint Committee on Judiciary and Finance heard the most contentious bill I've ever seen in my years of service. Hour after hour, we heard compelling testimonies expressing how the issue of same-sex marriage would affect our ohana, be it our blood relatives in Kama'aina or Malahini, or who have come to our islands to make Hawaii their home. We are all one community, one ohana, and this bill, like no other, has divided us. The people's expectations were raised when our committees took the unprecedented step of allowing testimony to be received over a five-day period. We received the equivalent of more than 30 reams of paper from our people. Person after person came forward to speak for just two minutes, and even though they knew they would command just a short amount of, atten of our attention, they patiently waited for hours for days sitting on the cold granite hallway floors or standing under the hot sun at the rotunda for the opportunity to say what they could. As it was expressed that some had felt no matter what side they were on, it, bro it broke my heart because the criticisms that I have heard from our constituents were some of our colleagues did not treat our citizens with respect that they deserve. Some of our colleagues chose to belittle testifiers for their beliefs or the way they talked or for what they said. Or many were abruptly interrupted, missentenced, or told their message was repetitive or were dismissed without being heard. Many left humiliated, upset, and disturbed, asking themselves, was the time worth it? Is anyone listening? Receiving this feedback from our constituents was heartbreaking to me. I blame the process. And our constituents still came back each day, and they stayed. Some may have even lost their jobs to come and stay. Hundreds upon hundreds came with the hope that their mana'o would be considered sin sincerely. But despite letting thousands of people speak for days, the committee came to a decision in just a mere two hours, two hours. No one could read all that material and consider everything that was said within that amount of, of time and treat our people's mana'o with the aloha it deserved. Again, I blame our process. Aloha was a central theme throughout the public hearing. Persons both in support and opposition used this term frequently throughout the proceedings. It was used so frequently, its meaning seemed lost to everyone. Aloha became the buzzword, and by using it, it were led to think that all the words were pono. There are two testimonies that stood out for me. The first was from Carla Keliiho Malu Akiona, a hulu kumu, kumu from Mililani. And this is what she quoted in her testimony. We Hawaiians have so much taken from us, and just when you think there's nothing more that can be taken, this happens. We don't appreciate people coming into our hale, robbing us of our religious freedoms, trying to destroy our families, restricting our voting rights, and polluting these spiritual lands by dismantling what God has instituted marriage between one man and one woman. She continued, you need to understand what aloha is. You have to understand what is, and most people do not know what aloha is. Aloha is everything that is pono. Everything that is righteous, correct, and everything that is in, in the light. Anything else is other, is dark. So if you want to talk about love, kindness, and compassion, and all of those things that what it is, aloha is the most sacred word in the Hawaiian culture, and it is being frivolously used by people utilizing 
my culture, my aloha, and to pass what we all know is wrong. Mr. Speaker, this brings only sadness to, to my heart after hearing Ms. Akiona's testimony. She further, at a later time, expresses that testifying and trying to get your point across in two minutes is very difficult, but being called back up and questioned Representative, your is time is up. Mr. Speaker, I still have three minutes remaining on my time. I yield my time. All Thank right. you. So ordered, Representative. But being called back up and questioned is much more difficult, trying to understand the questions, gathering your thoughts, organizing them in a short amount of time, and delivering your answers in a manner that all can comprehend is quite a challenge. Emotions also begin to arise and at times are hard to control. With that being said, I would now like to address your question and of how this bill would affect the Hawaiians, I ask you, how would you feel if someone came into your hale and robbed you of your culture and lifestyle? If they stripped you of your lands, language queen hula, which keeps the history of Hawaii and its people and other rights to say the least, how would you feel if your children, relatives, and friends were best and punished at school for speaking their Hawaiian language or at home by a non-Hawaiian spouse. How about all the diseases brought to Hawaii, killing thousands of Hawaiians? This is just the tip of the iceberg. Put yourself in our shoes. I now have a very small eke, or bag of rights, taking my religious freedoms, restricting my voting rights, parents' freedom of speech, destroying our families, and imposing this bill on our vulnerable children will not have a positive effect on Hawaii. My small eke has now become much lighter. I have next to nothing left in my bag, and as was said by another testifier by the name of Lei, it's like going back to the old days. We're going backwards. Are you feeling sad and down? Is it becoming hard for you to function and continue on? How's your family feeling? We're, we've worked so hard to survive. This bill is a hanaho of theft for the Hawaiians. Theft always leaves a horrible impact on its victim more I became saddened. Mr. Speaker, this process has forced all of us to sometimes show our lack of aloha. We do not mean to do that. We promised our people we would listen to them. Do we hear them? Do we see them? All of us feel that we do, but the people feel that we should take this to a vote because they haven't been heard that the integrity of our process, we have failed them, and the integrity of this institution has been lost. The second testimony that I will never forget was from a tutu from a neighbor island. Her written testimony is somewhere buried in the blizzard of paper we received. She ended her testimony by singing Aloha Oi. For Native Hawaiians, this song has special meaning. Its lyrics speak All of right, two lovers. I think Mr. Your, Speaker, your three minutes is up. Mr. Speaker, I, I yield my final three minutes, Mr. Speaker. So ordered. Thank you. For Native Hawaiians, this song has a special meaning. Its lyrics speak of two lovers who share one last embrace before departing, but it serves to remind us of its writer, Queen Liliokalani. The testifier's message was powerful when our queen was the deposed in the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom, she also protested through legal means, imploring the United States government to cease their hostility and restore what was wrongly taken. Our queen, like many of us today, believed that the great powers would do justice and hear her plea. Tragically, her words fell upon deaf ears and our people have suffered through genocide and indignation under the yoke of foreign aggression. Again, we face aggression from afar that threatens our culture and the very essence of who we are, the ability to determine as a people what is pono, what is in the light, what is aloha. And the people's plea have fallen on deaf ears. Awe. Mr. Speaker, I blame the process again. But I would like to take this time to also recognize that even though we were faced with not so, got, not so good situation in our process. I must acknowledge that in the House, we made every effort to try and accommodate those who came and testified. 
Yes, it may not be sufficient time that many may criticize us, but an extra minute did help. And yes, our chairs did, was open to allowing for more testimony, and it took some discussion among many of us. And yes, our committee members, exhausted and filled with emotion and compassion, and of course, just not wanting to really address this issue in the moment, stayed committed to this process that we were forced to do, stayed committed to the people that they serve, and did what they did at the best that they could do. And still, our community is divided. But I would like to say to my colleagues in the House, I commend you, I respect you, and I feel that you are courageous in whatever position that you have decided, because we all have different constituency. And the thing about it is, we were forced into this process where I feel if we had taken it up in regular session, the outcome may be a little different. So please know that I support you, and I have no ill feelings towards my colleagues. All and right, I Representative, say- Representative, your time is up. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I'll use my second time. Right. Thank Rep you. And Representative Giamani, uh, Representative, you've been speaking for 20 minutes, if you Thank understand you. that. Please and proceed. Thank you. And I say to all of our constitu constituents across the state, this decision was not easy for each and every one of us. No matter what side you took, it was very hard because we all are being criticized. But I want you to know that my no is not because I don't support equality. In fact, it's just the opposite. I support equality for all people. And because my district is diverse, I had to look at everything. And so I know there are many that are hurt by my decision. And I just wanna say I'm sorry and please forgive me. But if you know who I am, and if you understand where I'm coming from, I'm standing no on this process that should have never happened. Because if we talk about equality, then why aren't we addressing the reconciliation of our Native Hawaiian people? Why aren't we addressing the many, the many ill issues that are plaguing our communities, like the homeless or the drugs that are coming into our, our homeland, or even our families that need our support? Why aren't we looking at those issues if we're gonna do a special session. And that's why, for me, it's about the process. And I feel that this issue alone was not enough for us to call because it did not have an urgency or of an emergency nature. But I do support equality. And I hope many of you can understand, but I support all people. And yes, this bill needs much more improvements. And you have heard so many amendments, floor amendments, and they may have come at a later time, but it's because the process didn't allow us the time to be able to go deeply into what we felt was addressing our constituents. So I commend every introducer, and I commend this body for entertaining it. As exhausting as it has been, I just wanna say thank you to all of my colleagues, because I know that for all of us, it's not gonna be easy as we go into our homelands. And I hope that my message tonight could be after whatever happens after the vote, that we can go home to begin to heal and to now talk about better things and not bad things because this has been hard for each and every one of us. And that you can respect each and every one of our decision because we are unique and we are elected by our different districts. But more importantly, when we talk about love, Let's show what we truly mean by unconditional love. We've heard so many people talk about it. Now it's time to put it in action. So Mr. Speaker, I just wanna say to you, thank you, because I know you've had a hard task. And I wanna say thank you to all the staff because they work really hard. But again, this was an experience that we can all learn from. And I hope we never have to go through this again, as painful as it is, because if we do special session, I hope we can work on issues that do matter in all of our districts that we all can benefit from.
Thank you very much. All right, Representative. Thank you very much. All right, members of Representative Hall.